Now, Ukraine could start exporting grain today from its ports after Russia promised safe passage. Yeah, but it's not just food that's stuck there. People still struggling to escape the war-torn country. Uh, no surprise, is it? Brooks Newmark is former Conservative minister and has helped more than 10,000 people flee so far. He's in Lviv this morning. Brooks, it's, it's good to see you. Um, good to see talk you too. us through what is the current situation with the number of people who are wanting to get out and being able to get out. What is happening? Uh, it's very mixed. Uh, they're, I guess, flowing both ways. So uh, the war zone keeps moving around. And so what I've ended up doing over the past four or five months is setting up a series of hubs um, where I believe and where the evidence seems to be where the Russians keep sending missiles so that um, if civilians want to get out, um, you know, we can help facilitate that. Um, but there is a flow back uh, into Ukraine. So where I am at the moment in Lviv, and I was in Kharkiv yesterday, but I went a thousand kilometers to get here. Um, you know, it's almost like there isn't a war going on here. And a lot of people who are overseas, uh, particularly in Poland, sort of want to get back home. So there isn't this huge pressure that there was, particularly at the beginning of the war, to leave the country. Where the pressure is, is to get away from where the war is to uh, safer places within the country, which tends to be in the west side of the country. So what I'm moving, what I'm doing now is moving people from, let's say, Kharkiv and Dnipro, or from the south, from Odessa and Mykolaiv or Zaporizhia, and moving them up north and west towards Lviv, where I am now. Um, to make sure that they're safe. From that point on, they tend to visit family and friends and stay with them. Again, they don't have their home in the same way, their jobs, their careers. People are being, have been forced to be extremely flexible. What kind of situations are you finding that people are in? And, you know, they're having to totally recreate their skill set and get very different jobs. Well, I mean, I think it's even more basic than that. I think it's trying to find somewhere, A, to stay, some shelter, and to get some food. I think uh, finding jobs is not easy at the moment in this environment, um, uh, which is why some people are going overseas. But even when they go overseas, it's still not easy to get a job. I know people that have ended up going to uh, Germany and France uh, that are struggling at the moment. I mean, I have to say that of all the choices that there are out there, uh, Interestingly enough, coming to the UK, you're actually, if you get to the UK, you're looked after better than almost any other country because we provide, you know, a huge amount of support to people. Uh, we provide uh, 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 sort of basic services like healthcare, education for the children and so on. So I think if people get to the UK, they're well treated. But the thing is, for, if, you're in, if you're in Kharkiv, where I was yesterday, Going to London is like going to uh, Australia, as far as they're concerned. For them, all they want to do is get away from Kharkiv and get to somewhere like Lviv on the west side of the country. Because, I mean, there's, there's still that I mean, and totally understandable urge to, get, to not be that far from home, I guess, and to get back home as soon as they oh, yeah. possibly can, oh, yeah. as I mean, unlikely I mean, as that looks at the moment. Yeah, no, I mean, I was yesterday, I helped move out over a thousand women and children from a Russian held uh, area right on the uh, uh, border of where uh, uh, Russia is at the moment. And um, uh, a lot of people, you know, you know, some of them have been there four or five months hoping amongst hope that there'll be some sort of counterinsurgency and the Ukrainian army will come back. But in the end, they sort of give up and want to come back. The people who tend to stay, of course, are the elderly. And their view is it's sort of, I, I don't care who's in control here. Just leave me alone to sort of get on with my life. Uh, and then I think that's the sort of attitude, I think, of particularly many of the elderly people. Those with younger families now want to get out. So yesterday, I think I got out about uh, 1,015 people, including 190 children. Now, those 190 children in particular then, have to go somewhere where they're looked after and hopefully get, you know, educated when the, the new term starts. So there's a, an enormous amount of pressure on, in addition to which 
you know, I've been spending time um, moving. There's a lot of orphanages also around the border areas. So last week I moved 38 orphans from up on the Belarus border because, you know, they're worried that the a Russian army with a Belarus army will come down from the north again towards Kiev. So I moved 38 um, orphans with five support workers to Gdansk, where I found a place for them to stay. It's amazing work that you're doing, and it's really good to talk to you this morning. Brooks, thank you very much indeed.